Hello, everyone, and welcome to Phoenix Gaming. I am your host, Nick Henning. We're kicking off our favorite season on this channel here, which is WSBG uh, Finals being released season, I guess. <laughs> and so we're going to start off with a banger. We're going to start with uh, Arnak here. I'm going to go ahead and play. You can watch the original version of this video with Paula, Min, and Elwin, the designers of the game. Paula's not. Min and Elwin are. Uh, <laughs> on the Dice Tower channel, if you like, you'll see their video at the bottom there. And Antoine's going to lead us off. Um, he is sitting in seat one with a pretty classic pickup of an arrowhead uh, at the beginning here. This is kind of like the privilege of going in first seat. Um, I do think that first seat is kind of one of the worst in, in Arnak, but not like unplayable certainly or anything like that jc is going to follow up by going and grabbing compasses usually second seat kind of debates between rubies or compasses as a initial play he said compasses and then it was moved originally to the the books there but i think that kind of indicates that he is indeed looking at that uh uh that artifact as an option the uh traders coins or whatever it is to like upgrade one of those tablets into that very essential arrowhead that we're talking about for some initial early things um we do have a actually a card cam on us uh in this game but the amount of times that it gets popped up where i'm holding my hand versus not is uh is <laughs> is furious so we'll have to kind of decide i do know that in my starting hand here i have two coins two fear and one explore which is not the ideal i kind of like you like having the two explore cards in your opening hand i think this is probably the worst opening hand you can have um and assessing the board here you know, since I can't explore with my second action and JC took the explore spot, if he does not go exploring with his three compass tokens, then I'm in this position where I actually am going to have a difficult time grabbing a second tent site um, going third here, which is which is quite a bummer. Looking at the card row, we've got bear trap, grappling hook, ostrich, horse, and airplane. And airplane, I think, is... Um, Antoine was telling me afterwards he thinks it's a little overrated by players, but I do think that it is actually the best card in the game. Uh, maybe not over dog, but it's it's really quite up there. It gives you two compasses, which are very important, uh, an auto an auto explore, which is sort of like a third card in value. And so I decide that I don't really love my starting options here. I can get boxed out of um, exploring 10 sites anyway, so I'm going to do the one thing that I want to make sure... I have as a good first turn, which is to buy an airplane straight off the bat. The other option I was considering was actually throwing down my worker on the two coin spot. Like it's entirely possible that Antoine didn't draw another coin in hand. And if I play on the two coin spot right now, I kind of have um, a lot more flexibility in terms of what I can do with my coins. And that being said, I find, kind of figure like, well, you know, Antoine's in this position in first seat where he might just go and grab a ruby. And that way he can just sort of like explore to the first tier of the row on his own. Um, that was actually kind of what I was thinking he was doing. It wasn't clear to me what uh, what JC was going to do in this spot. But that was kind of what I was thinking the world was going to look like at this place. Where um, I would be left with coins as the only single spot action essentially available to me. Um, and I'll get back into that in a minute when we see what Antoine actually does. But I do want to point out the assistance here as well as the like starting row. Like I like horse. I definitely like airplane clearly. But the starting row of cards otherwise is not the most exciting starting row of cards. Definitely like on the lower uh, lower strength side of cards that we see here. Bear trap is good, but it's not like not where I want to be spending my money at the beginning. I want to be spending my money on Bear Trap in like the middle of the game um, because those one-off effects are nice, but a one-off effect doesn't develop like the power of your deck at all throughout the course of the game. Um, but the assistants are also on the weaker side. Oftentimes that purchase assistant and the um, especially the exile existent are considered to be two of the weakest assistants. And uh, it's not even like that car assistant is uh, terribly popular either. Antoine goes and gets coins here, and JC immediately follows up by getting tablets, which is pretty heartbreaking for me, as it means really the only spot that I have left to go with three cards in hand is that um, is that gem spot with the card discard. So I'm actually, you see me nodding sadly there, because it means that I am actually going to have a round where I just don't use my second worker, which is a really, really bad spot to start in. Um, literally just leaving value on the table at the beginning. Um, even if I had played 
uh, my action first, right? I would maybe be in trouble. The dis the difference, the reason that I was thinking about going for those two coins first is because if I grab the two coins first, then I do at least have, um, well, I still have four cards in hand, first of all. I might not get the airplane, uh, but I have two cards I could use to maybe go to the, um, the arrowhead site, right? Whereas at this stage, if I'm going and getting those gems, I'm left with one card in hand. I actually have a absolutely no way left so that was a risk of using the two dollars to pick up the airplane i did pick up you know a very important item to me that i probably wouldn't have been able to pick up otherwise um i would have been i would have been picking up horse instead of instead of airplane which is i mean i like i like horse i think horse is pretty good uh i don't i think it's worth you know a smidge less which is maybe roughly what like one value less thing is right when I'm, I'm not making good sense there i think but um when you play a card right if it's a fear card you, and you play to a tent site every every tent site is worth two value right two gold or an arrowhead which is worth two value so you're generating plus two but if you're using a normal card a gold or a compass which is what i was talking about there i'm just generating plus one value so a lot of times i consider the archaeologists your your little worker guys as um, generating plus one value if you're using them. So I've lost one value here in the first turn um, by not being able to uh, explore into that site. JC goes ahead and he does the um, buy the explorer or the trader's coins thing, which gets him his uh, tablet upgraded into an arrowhead. And we're in this position in the first round where we're seeing all three opponents, no explorers. Um, and we're not a single one of us is going to be able to get a turn one assistant. We didn't prioritize it. Antoine certainly had the capacity to do that uh, by by grabbing a gem instead of grabbing the two coins. I do wonder if he was valuing developing his deck or if he was valuing blocking me out of um, out of being able to play the second worker. It's not fully clear. Uh, but he goes and buys horse, which at the time I know he's not the most excited about. I like horse, I think, more than the average player, um, but not a bad get for him. I think Parrot is a card that we... Nope, I don't know why Parrot's being talked about here. Um, we flip Watch off the top, which is pretty great for JC. Watch is a, a one-coin value that can make upwards of three value per turn. Is a really, really cheap cost to reward ratio a lot of times people aren't super excited about getting coins on the bird map but uh, i do think this is a pretty good get for him in this situation um i am done for the round i've got nothing left i got the one coin so here i am passing pretty early having just picked up an airplane on the first turn not a great start um antoine here also with like a so-so start right he's like uh he's he's moved up uh, on the track here, he picked up horse. Um, so he has a little bit of extra value than I have because he got to use both of his archaeologists, but he's in a pretty similar boat that I am. So you know, you're sort of asking yourself this question of like, which of these two seats do you want to be in? And uh, it, it d just depends on how much you care about airplane. Um, I think JC probably kicking off with the, the certainly the most interesting of the starts, but I also think the most valuable. Al Antoine's going to go ahead and pick up the bear trap here for an easy monster kill. I think that's a hard choice. I think that if I was in Antoine's position, I would pretty seriously consider the fishing pole um, early in the game. I think the fishing pole does a lot of value. I like that it's two victory points for $2. So I do think that's a pretty tough choice uh, between the, the bear trap and the fishing pole, but Antoine clearly indicating that he is going to be exploring in his next turn. Um, I do think that that's something also that it's a, it's a, oh, I guess it's not risky for him. I was going to say it's like he's going to draw into his two explore cards. He's got his horse, which is the third one. Um, you can like get a really unlucky shuffle where you put both your explorers at the bottom, but he's actually immune to that thanks to the horse. So ignore the concerns there. Um, JC here picking up some extra kind of coins and explorers as he's going to round out the the, the turn. Um, he's only spent one coin and started with a couple. So I think he uh, looks like he's dropping another couple coins here to pick up ostrich. I personally am a pretty big fan of the torch and would have been tempted to take the torch myself. Um, but JC knows that he's going to be exploring in the next turn, it looks like. Uh, although he is is potentially in a position where he's going to have to be very careful with the number of compasses that he has. He started with one. He gained two from the action site. It looks like he gained one from his cards. He's no, He knows he's going to draw another one off of his deck, so he's really looking to get 
a third compass on reshuffle, which means that he has to be um, pretty cautious about adding extra things into his deck. Uh, if he added something else, he, he might be in a, a tricky situation here in terms of like what his deck draws into. I think he ran out of coins, so he doesn't get to pick up the hat that's in play there. Um, and hat is a pretty good first turn pickup. It just like upgrades one of those original cards that you have in your deck uh, for only one coin worth a point. Like I think it's a really good card and it's like a card that most of us I think would have been pretty interested in buying <laughs> in the first round. Um, and we flip what I think is a really exciting card here, the uh, the Runic Spearblade or whatever it's called, uh, that first artifact there. Um, and you see me draw my hand here. I know that I'm drawing that compass off the deck. I know that I'm drawing the uh the airplane and then i shuffle my deck and i draw into coin coin fear which is not i guess as bad as fear fear coin but it's pretty rough as i really really wanted an extra compass you can't see my resource board right now but that means that i am one compass shy of doing the top explore one of the the tier two explorers which is really really good in third seat it's part of the reason i prioritize getting airplane at the beginning of the game because I wanted to do that third level explore, um, so I'm now I'm now one compass short because I had two from the first turn, one extra here, two more for the thing, and JC goes ahead and plays an ostrich and uh, d uses it straight up. He needs probably some compasses to explore himself, but he also doesn't want me to explore into the top tier. So um, I get unlucky with my deck, and JC makes sure that if I'm unlucky with my deck, I don't have an opportunity to get that sixth compass which unfortunately means that i am exploring mid row that's why you see me all crossed arms and grumpy here trying to figure out what my options were because that was indeed going to be my first play it's a little bit of a bummer for jc that he uses the ostrich to go there i think that it's a pretty heavy indicator that he did not draw he like shuffled his fear to the bottom of his deck that looks maybe exciting on this turn but it means that all the items that he's bought are in his hand and that means that the fear cards are at the bottom of his deck um, which uh, it means that on his third turn, he's going to have kind of like an awkward go of it, being unable to interact with the board, sitting in third seat um, right when it is next turn. So he, it's it's definitely a, a little bit awkward that he, he uses the ostrich for him to go down and get those two compasses. Uh, but on the other hand, it does mean that if he... he reshuffles his deck he's diminishing the chance that he will draw those fear cards on round four um but he's going to want to try to remove at least one of them in turn three so that he doesn't end up drawing as many of them in turn five right his his deck's already getting to the point where he almost has two cycles because he's added i think two cards to his deck so far so he has an eight card deck which um you know he's going to draw five of those eight cards right and if the if neither of those cards are fear cards, which is what I would expect if he would, he would play a fear card to go to that compass site. Um, so if neither of those cards, are, if both are, I guess it looks like there's three cards left in his deck after the ostrich. So he must have bought three cards. And I miss, oh, of course, the trader's coins. Um, you know, and the bottom of those, that that deck is, is you know, fear cards. It means that like he doesn't have a lot of wiggle room for like buying cards this turn without just putting his deck into a, 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 a hand state where he, draws this half of his deck and then the next round draws this half of his deck exactly um which can be a little bit awkward i don't get a complete bomb miss here by hitting something that i really don't want to um particularly the equipment site uh fortunately i explore out and get a coin and a um and a tablet which is i think probably one of the better flips i can have at this stage i mean I think almost all the flips, except for that one site that I mentioned, and then maybe something like the coin and two tablets would be not ideal for me, but passable for me. Antoine here goes ahead and he really needs a gem. So he's actually going to throw a coin at getting a gem, which is not ideal, right? He'd, he'd much rather do this with two fear cards. We know that he has a horse in hand and his horse could draw into a fear. So he's really highly valuing getting that gem, saying that he needs to move up. He wants to move up the left side of that track and get that bonus before anyone else does, before JC does. So he's he's valuing, he's saying, I'll throw this coin into making sure that I get the, the freebie on board, which I'm, if I'm looking at it correctly, looks like a coin to me. So he's going to kind of like rebate for... Um, his impatience there which is appropriate right like he if he's concerned that his opponents 
uh, if JC in particular, because he's on the left side of the research track, uh, if he's concerned that JC is going to move up the board, then he might as well pay the coin, rebate the coin when he moves up the board, um, rather than not getting it at all, rather than letting his opponent uh, be able to get it. Here, JC has that extra compass, and he's going to go out and uh, do some exploring of his own. He'll get some extra tablets along the way here, and he flips into a pile of extra tablets. We're going to see coin two tablets here in a second. And he now has a boat of coins, which is going to make that trader's coins very, very valuable for him because he wants to be doing all this upgrading. He flips that monster that is uh, normally pretty difficult to kill, although he's got kind of an excess of tablets, so um, he he might actually choose to, to kill this guy later in the round. Um, I go ahead and use... Uh, it looks like I used my idol, question mark. How else did I get two tablets? I didn't use my... There's some way I got two tablets. I didn't get them on the first turn, right? Yeah, I, I used... I used... Oh, no, I got one tablet. Because I rebated a tablet. Did I have a tablet from the first turn? No. Dancing. Hold on a second. I'm pausing the video. Oh, I'm a fool. Of course, I, I prepared for this by going to the idle spot that has a tablet, which is one of the best idle spots you can go to early for exactly this situation. So I had the tablet from exploring. I was the first one who didn't explore this turn, which meant that I was pretty much guaranteed to go up there um, into that second row of the research trap, get that tablet rebate back, um, so I do still have the tablet on hand, which is really, really useful for me. Uh, and then I can like advance up the track uh, with my book and start getting assistance along the way here. So some nice flexibility for me along the way there. Also gives me a, uh, a compass, I believe, so I can move up the left side of the track if I like, because um, I ran out of compasses. Or I guess I didn't run out of compasses. I didn't have enough compasses to explore the top of the track, but now I actually have excess compasses because I didn't need to use six of them. I only ended up using three. Um, and three being like phantom discounted by uh, by our good friend, the airplane. Antoine here goes ahead and executes the thing that he had set himself up for. Um, he needs to do it now before JC uses his idol to move up the side of the track. So, um, you know, JC was able to uh, get the compasses he needed this turn and block me from the compasses that he needed this turn, but did slow him down from getting either of those two first come first serve rewards, even though he was first to play this turn. So um, the fact that Antoine and I were able to grab resources to advance on the track, you know, was something that we both cho chose to prioritize, um, knowing that the timing here was very important to us. <laughs> uh, looks like I, I sequence incorrectly a couple times or decide what to do. I think what I'm debating here is how do I use my I have an extra compass now, right? Uh, because I advanced up the track. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to grab the um, the uh, 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 arrowhead discounter, the, the artifact that I was talking about at the beginning. And I, I stop and I realize that my opponents don't have excess exploration tokens in hand, that I have time to take advantage of this myself. So what I should do is use my fear card, go ahead and grab an arrowhead. What this is gonna allow me to do is then advance up twice on the research track because I have that extra tablet to move into the second row as well. Um, I think I might've missed Antoine's, or maybe this is Antoine, maybe we're on turn three and he just plays horse and draws a new card or yeah, because we're already back to JC. So Antoine just plays a horse and draws into his other options so he can figure out what his last choice is. JC will go ahead and buy that uh, um, torch that I mentioned earlier. And it's a good thing that he didn't listen to me and buy it because if he didn't draw any of his fear cards, that's a really huge bummer to draw a torch in that instance. But he knows that the bottom of his deck is fear cards now. So buying the torch, he's guaranteed to be able to use it. And we're getting into the stage of the game um, on bird side where tablets are becoming very very important because that sort of third row the double tablets arrowhead is just such a huge stone wall for people it's actually part of the reason why i really like this card that i just buy because it allows you the flexibility of 
tablets or arrowheads, which you really need in the mid game here. So um, I drop three compasses, two to buy that card and one to move up the track there. And that's gonna put me in a position where I now have the resources to move up the track um, and get my second assistant as well. I take the car assistant, which no one's been super excited about. I actually quite like the car assistant myself. I think that getting the um, early compasses are quite good and on bird side, like usually need money by the end of the track. So I think uh, even when it's upgraded, it's pretty good. It's definitely on the like mid tier side, but it does everything that I really want any, any assistant to do um that is not one of the top tier assistants and then we flip the upgrading assistant which is a really powerful but weird assistant because there's a lot of demand on this side of the board for tablets so you're not always excited to get it but in a vacuum um i really uh, i'm getting excited about a friend of mine winning a, a ring on the, another table over there um <laughs> it's a it's really powerful to upgrade uh you know, it's like, it's, it's, I think one of the more powerful actions. And then when you upgrade that assistant, it also gives you compass, which is really, really valuable later in the game. So JC sitting on three or four tablets here, maybe just the three can't quite tell with, uh, his circle cam over there, um, really, really can make a lot of use of this card. And we know that tablets are very accessible in play, given that we've flipped the two tablets, single coin spot. So tablets are going to be more plentiful in this game than they would in a lot of other setups, which is going to increase the value of that upgrader. Antoine, on the other hand, doesn't really have anything to do with an upgrader. So the idea of him moving up into the second or into the research track, although actually he doesn't even have the resources to do it, is, is a little bit difficult. He's uh, grappling with his decision for a while here, which makes me wonder if he's got essentially a fear card in hand and a compass in hand and is trying to decide, does it make sense for me to explore here? <clears throat> Allow me to like get up the track, get those resources that I need, or should I not inefficiently use my fear card? It's a tough position to be in. Um, it looks like he spends... Uh, oh, I see, I see. He doesn't have the, the appropriate resources uh or um travel icon so he spends two coins along with his compasses to go exploring um he's flipping into an extra fear here but there's a lot of good resources on this getting a tablet getting a, a gem at this stage is is really really powerful he can move his book up with the gem then he's got the tablet so he could use his idol and so if he wants to this turn suddenly out of nowhere he's actually able to also advance to the second tier and get his two assistants if he wants to do that um people really don't like getting that that fear card and that's fair but it's a it's a pretty pretty good flip for him if he does have a fear card in hand right now that's nice that he can discard it towards this spider uh so kind of undoes the hey i didn't get to use my fear card part unfortunately for him he doesn't have any coins right now might not have any in hand and uh doesn't have any arrowheads right now which he could fix with an idol but he just might not have the flexibility, so this spider might end up punching him, putting even more fear cards into his deck. I think that would put him at a total of four fear cards if he can't beat that this turn. JC says, yes, I definitely want the upgrader. I do, in fact, have four tablets. Uh, and so they go ahead and uh, move. he moves up uh, his book to make sure that happens. And that's one of the advantages of sort of um, having some flexibility there with the idol. JC said, okay, I'll throw the idol. I'll get the uh, arrowhead up here. And make that happen and he flips the boat guy <laughs> so i'm in this position again where i can grab this um it's entirely possible antoine's next turn he is grabbing boat guy if i don't grab boat guy so the question is do i want something random or do i want boat guy do i want to choose to advance and i say you know what i'll wait to see what antoine has going on and I will kill this monster first. Usually I leave a monster for final action. I have two coins on hand. I could use those two coins to like have bought a torch earlier or in this case buy a fishing pole. But I actually want my deck to be as thin as possible. Antoine does find his way into two compasses here, which he'll use uh, along with that sundial to get the two tablets. I... I the sundial I think is quite good, but um, compasses are good at the beginning as well. But I, I mentioned how important tablets are at the beginning of this game. I really hate taking the, the sundial without uh, passing for the turn and getting the, the ruby. I really want to get that maximum value there. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and the, the gems are, are not as good at this stage of the track. You know, th there are gem spaces there, but JC already, or not JC, um, 
Antoine already has the the gem uh, to advance, and you can't use a gem to advance from slot one and two because they're catty corner to each other. <clears throat> JC does what we talked about earlier and um, basically goes ahead and kills this monster, um, cleaning up, making it so he doesn't add a fear to his deck. He'll be able to clear out more fear next turn from his deck. Making it kind of even more of a bummer that he didn't draw into any fear this turn. He would have loved to draw fear off that ostrich. Um, that would actually allow him to like throw the fear card away and then immediately burn it with the the lizard. But him advancing one more step on the research track at this stage and leaving that monster unkilled is not really that valuable because it's not like he's going to get an extra assistant along the way. I'm out of time, so I can't delay anymore, and I end up getting Boat Guy for maximum travel flexibility, um, but mostly for getting two extra compasses per turn. And Antoine will go ahead and grab the last guy in the slot here, one of the best people, the Explorer Lady, who will give you just compasses upon compasses all game long. She is great. And then we are stuck in this position where either Antoine or JC, whoever blinks first, is going to have to take what are considered to be some of the weaker assistants along the way as we've drilled our way down the entire first stack. JC passes for some coins with his watch, which is, you know, his 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 privilege for having picked up watch on the first turn. I like using the watch as a pass action here, so um, big fan of, of the discipline of being slow on it. There's nothing really on the track that's so exciting to buy anyway that um, he needs to make sure he gets it, so I'm a fan. Antoine here, I think, is about to pass for the... Oh, of course, we forgot about his bear trap. What does he care about discarding cards and having uh, things? He he already... He paid for that privilege last turn. So, three explorers, three monster kills on the second turn of the game. It's not a common thing. You often see sometimes in turns one and two, people not killing their monsters. Um, I think this is a reflection of the fact that no one is super excited about their resource velocity we are all uh, we're all basically just trying to like make sure we don't put extra fear in our deck. I especially don't want extra fear in my deck because I want to keep a very thin deck with just an airplane in it. Um, and my opponents are seeing that like, well, you know, if I spend my time, like Antoine set up with the bear trap and JC saying if I spend my time moving up the track, I'm already kind of behind anyway uh, because I was sort of playing this like lower, easier strategy. Um, on turn one with the uh, the compasses into the trader coins, but it means that I don't have, you know, the same as like having done two explorers, right? The extra like flexibility of the of the idols and whatever those other resources are. Um, so he is going a little bit lower and slower, which is fine because again, just, we're not like hugely rushing for assistance here. I'm feeling a lot better about my odds after turn two being the one player with two assistants and making two extra compasses per turn is a lot of flexibility, a lot of options, a lot of good feelings. Um, JC has, uh, has the most cards in his deck, the most points in his deck by a fair margin. He's going to have a little bit of an awkward turn three um, with the pair of fear cards in his hand. I have the potential to draw into my airplane yet again here. Um, in fact, I think the odds are, are pretty decent for me. Um, they're more than 50-50. I don't remember exactly what the odds are based on the, on the cards in my deck. And Antoine here is in a similar position with his horse. Um, I think he I actually don't think he even bought any cards last turn. So uh, he might be, uh, but he did pick up a fear card. So his, his deck is, is a little bit more muddled in that way. But pretty similar positions for everybody so far, right? Everybody's explored once. Um, both JC and I have used our idols. Antoine has the extra flexibility of not having used his. Uh, and, you know, stepwise, I'm up essentially like two steps on the research track. Antoine is one behind me and JC is two behind that. So JC is like farthest behind on the on the tracks. Uh, but again, has, has purchased the most cards in his deck. I think if we called the game right here, uh, JC would win in terms of the score that's available. Uh, fortunately for me, I do hit this airplane with my like 60 or 70 or 75% chance or something like that. Um, but I, again, have not a lot of compasses. This is actually really why I like airplane more than anything else is I can keep my compasses and I can buy things from the board. And so I go exploring. Again, I don't hit the uh, the bomb that is the, uh, the get a... Um, get an item card, the, the plane crash site or whatever it is. 
Uh, actually, this is a pretty good one. Getting the tablet or the uh, arrowhead there is nice. And I have a fear card in hand, which the uh, the eagle says I want to. I want you to use your fear card on me. So now I can use my my fear card for that purpose rather than going to a tenth site. As long as I'm able to get access to a ruby, which I can do with that idol. So that's something I'm already thinking of right off the right off hand. I really like to be able to use those fear cards in my hand, and uh, I, this gives me a way to do it. It's part of the reason why I think exploring early is great. You then know what you're going to need to pay throughout the course of the rest of the term. Antoine knows that he's going to need to get himself some compasses so that he can also get in probably on the exploration game here is what I'm thinking. There's nothing on the artifact track there that it's begging to be purchased. So uh, I think he just is short on compasses and wants to make sure that he gets the extra flexibility of a second idol going to another spot um, and seeing, seeing what he can do with that. And uh, it's actually entirely possible that Antoine is, is angling towards getting six compasses so that he can explore a level two site because he's player two this turn, which means he'll be player one next turn. So exploring a level two site is extra valuable to him. JC says, I like all the resources that a person can get over there. Certainly he needs the jewel to advance the first on the research track. Having that extra tablet, tablets are amazing at this stage of the game and they're extra amazing for him as the upgrader. So he says, I'll afford to take a fear card um, and go to this spot. I think an interesting choice here is that he uses his trader scales as that option. He's essentially saying, look, I don't want to use the tablet to activate this card, which would upgrade one of my other tablets. He's acknowledging that there is a tablet starvation essentially at this stage of the game and uh, using the trader's coins to explore rather than to upgrade his stuff. So he's leaving a little bit of value on the table, right? Because the, 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 the trader scales is worth like three, right? And upgrade two coins at the cost of one. So it's a, it's a card that gives plus two value. Um, but he's saying, you know what? I don't like coins that much. There's nothing I really want to be buying on the board here. And uh, I already have a couple coins in hand, so I'm not going to get engaged with this. I'm at the stage where I know that we're at this tablet choke point. I see that we're across. I'm right at the tablet choke point. So um, there's a big valuable value to me of getting those extra tablets and at this stage i know what i'm using the one fear card in my hand for so i go ahead and explore not explore um copy the site that jc had explored on turn one horse tells antoine what he wants to do with the rest of his turn jc draws into all the rest of his uh his 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 two fear that we know is in his deck so he's going to use that efficiently to grab another jewel that means he's using both of his jewels to go up the track and uh uh can get a uh an assistant this turn. You might look at his three fears and say, oh, maybe he should take that exile leader. But the awkward thing about this is that the rest of his deck does not contain any fear. And so depending on how the shuffle goes, he might not draw any fear on turn four. He's also about to use a uh, uh, torch to remove one of those fear. Um, so it kind of changes the equation a little bit. I'll move up onto the next tier of the track here. I can upgrade one of my assistants to gold in the following turn by using an idol um, along with my resources is certainly an option to consider, but I don't really need coins for the same reason I was just talking about JC needing coins right now and upgrading my guys is that's what it does is it gives coins. So um, I might actually just end up running up the track, getting some first to play bonuses, taking advantage of the fact that I am ahead on the track at this point in time. Uh, so I have some flexibility there, and no one's really pressuring me in terms of the timing on the track, which is probably my main advantage at this point in time. Antoine fiddling around, counting his stuff, trying to figure out what he wants to do. Um, I think he dropped in his three compasses, four compasses. He must have gotten two compasses elsewhere. I just wasn't... Oh, of course, he's got his... Uh, his uh, compass leader so he does indeed go up to six compasses he's going to explore top row which is pretty great um and that that we're on turn three he's going to be the first player in turn four so whatever this is he gets to do he doesn't flip the most exciting um option for him what he would really like is the get a fear two tablets two arrowheads because it would allow him to just basically shoot up the track in the spots that he's in getting that gem is not as exciting for him because he's got nowhere where he can use the gem at this point in time unfortunately um but most of the top row cards have gems on them 
And of course, uh, this is not a terribly difficult monster to kill given the resources that he just got. So uh, it's not it's not the dream flip for him, but it's also um, not not terrible. I think getting ones that had tablets or compasses on them might have been more exciting. This might have been one of the like the lower value flips for him, honestly. Um, but I I think there was only one that was really really good, uh, and is is the one that I mentioned. Maybe the rainbow, the like coin compass tablet arrowhead would have been good too so like i i'd say like a two and six chance of flipping something that was probably pretty good otherwise he was stuck with a gem so you know be aware of the like distribution of resources of those exploration spots and acknowledge that probably when you're going to the top row you're hitting a gem most of the time which can be a little bit awkward on the bird map at the stage exactly where antoine is right now um jc advanced in the track i did exactly the same thing um, and, uh, and I, I got my bonus there, which, you know, I'm, I'm making it so that it is pretty difficult for me to advance my, my book, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm planning on essentially shooting this magnifying glass up there and getting some bonuses along the way. I've got a pile of compasses now that I can use for something, hopefully. <clears throat> JC's torching. um ah, okay here i used my idol to finish off the bird uh because i needed to use the idol to get the gem that i did not have my opponents are flushing gems i'm bad at gems uh but need one to impress this bird who now will take me sailing somewhere else in the future couple tablets in here um from antoine as well as other resources to get up to the next level of uh the research track we see sort of a game of chicken take place between anton antoine and jc here both of them don't want to be the person who flips the next assistant they want each other to deal with that problem um i think i'm about to make one of the weirdest choices that i have made in a game in a while but i have this like stack of compasses and i don't like just leaving resources on the board doing nothing and I know that I'm a, I am need to draw into my airplane as many times as possible. So I am going to buy Cleansing Cauldron here, wipe out that fear card from my deck, basically make it so that my deck is squeaky, squeaky clean, as small as possible. I pretty much have that one artifact, that, that airplane, and my other starting cards that are not fear cards. Um, the Cleansing Cauldron also draws me a card. I know it's not going to draw me anything exciting now. It's going to draw me like a coin or a compass right now. But I also know that that means it's going to draw me one card closer towards the airplane for next turn, right? Because I have to draw all the rest of my cards in deck. Um, it's not really that much of a draw an extra card because I'm also shuffling Cleansing Cauldron into the deck. So it's like draw one and then like increase my odds of, of, of drawing into something kind of like meh. Um, but it also is like just a very flexible travel icon that'll let me go in any, anywhere. Uh, so it's not the most riveting option, but I don't really want to buy any other things. I don't want to leave just all these compasses on board, uh, unused. And so i I decide I'm going to clean up my deck a little bit, which is not something I would normally do, but in a game where I want to hit airplane as many times as possible, um, I'm going to just increase the odds that I can do exactly that. Um, wish I could see the number of cards that Antoine has in his hand. He's got at least one he's like fiddling around with there. I can see on camera. Uh, but he stops and, and looks at this flip stone jars. Again, another card I would not buy at this stage in the game, unless I know exactly what the top card of my deck is and what, I, and if I need it. Um, and Antoine actually goes and he, draw, he has two compasses that he's not using. So he says, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use a stone drawer. I will draw into something else he also is like in theory drawing deeper into his into his deck uh, making it so that he's a little bit more likely to draw the horse next turn again because he yeah he played it already this turn um i think that this is this i think is a, a little bit more speculative of a purchase than even the cleansing cauldron Neither of these are cards that you're excited to see at this stage of the game. JC says, oh, okay, I'm going to move up on the track here. 
And uh, I think this was a where Antoine had made a mistake because I think he actually had exactly the same resources because we talked about how he had that extra gem from earlier. We saw that he had a bunch of tablets. Um, so he actually gives up a free card draw to JC by missing that he has the resources available to him to do that. Um, even if he had missed that, I do think that JC might have uh, an idol. No, no, no. JC took both normal normal actions this turn so yeah him him missing that uh is, is unfortunately going to cost him a card draw because i don't think he needed to rush that stone jar at all um so that is a little bit of a mistake on his part nice opportunity grab by jc to to press up the track there and just get resources and you see like right where he's saying all right i mean like i could get one of these bad assistants or i could get an extra card draw right now so i will just take the extra card draw right now jc knows that his deck is not the sexiest deck but um, dropping two coins on a two-point fishing rod here that is either good at exploring or maybe flipping another item later is uh, a, a choice I really, really agree with. He's going to have kind of like a mid, um, aggressively mid deck with a fair number of points in them, which are going to make a big difference later on in the game. So I'm I'm liking his line here of advancing up the track rather than moving his book to get the, the assistant, given that he can get those bonuses along the way and then buying just medium things flipping pickaxe here is a really really big deal um it's a super good card it's a little bit late in the game for pickaxe but antoine has the coins of course it's a one-to-one -one ratio it's going to give resources that he needs so he happily picks that up as a really really nice get for him another two coins here for jc picks up carrier pigeon which is an incredible card on this side of the map we've already talked about how important tablets are at this stage of the game um we're past the part where it's most important like on this turn three is like when tablets tend to be really really sparse so it's not as good as it would be earlier in the game but that's just true for any item that you're going to pick up at this stage um he's not unhappy to see that i am pretty unhappy to see two pretty good item cards flip up here while i'm already out for the round i have the coins to buy both of them but i've already passed so i don't have the option to do that that is kind of one of the problems of the strategy that I'm running here, which is I basically go airplane, advance, advance, I'm done. <laughs> it's a really, really short round for me, whereas my opponents are still continuing to play here. Um, JC uses his, uh, uh, his, his guardian from a previous turn to clear out some of his fear. And then I think is about to pass for the turn. I think he's just making sure he's not missing anything. Yeah, it's probably his like last coin or last compass. Looks like a compass, I guess, pass. This hall, by the way, is uh, significantly, that's brass you see behind us, um, is significantly more full when <laughs> it's the beginning of the day. So you kind of see uh, the hall get shrink and shrink and shrink with the number of players that are in it as we get later on. I think this is like 8 or 9 p.m. when we're playing this. It's actually one of the few times all four ring finals were playing at the same time, I think. At least three of them were. Maybe the fourth one wasn't a ring final, but even still, you don't always see the like four tables firing off at the same time. It's pretty pretty interesting. <clears throat> and it looks like we're all done for the round, yeah? Yeah, we're all passing for shuffling going into turn four. Going into turn four, um, again, like the fact that my opponents are playing this game of chicken with the assistance, which I think is appropriate because they want to get their their rewards, um, is working out very, very favorably for me in that I am just getting those little bit of extra value every turn with that second assistant, those extra compasses that are getting there. So I'm up like, you know, two value over my opponents in terms of the two rounds of assistance that I've been able to fire off here. We're all in a dead heat for moving up the track. Uh, we we are probably all interested in getting those extra rewards for being first come first serve since we're all um, competing for this move up here. And we look at our starting hand and uh, we knew we were gonna draw those compasses and uh, we draw both of our artifacts, we draw our airplane. Uh, and so I think that means that what's left in our deck are coins. I was planning on drawing all my cards this turn because I am gonna rush up the track here, but having an airplane to start with does mean that I get to explore early. So um, it was more lucky that I hit my airplane last turn than it was that I hit it this turn. I was like basically going to be guaranteed to hit it this turn. Antoine's gonna start off with an explore here. I think he might've just dropped two coins as well uh because that's just one airplane with a stone jar 
Um, and of course, he's going to grab the level three or level two site that he he teed up with his last turn explorer. So um, that's that's his his advantage, his privilege there. Um, the one thing actually, I'm more excited in my hand here to you, you see that I put my guardians as the cards in my hand because otherwise I forget to use them. One thing I'm actually more excited, uh, arguably, than the the plane here is the. Um, the artifact that allows me to pay a tablet and discount two tablets and the uh, arrowhead. That's a really nice surprise attack for advancing up the track that opponents can't anticipate. And this is a really good turn to have a surprise attack available um, as, as I'm moving up the, I'm, I'm looking at the right side, two layers up from me. Um, that's going to let me draw a card and draw another card. Just going to let me draw through my deck, increasing my odds of drawing airplane for yet another time on the fifth turn which would be pretty exciting. JC looking like he's dropping a gazillion research here to go, or uh, compasses here to go up top. It's a bit of a bummer for me because I think I was thinking of doing exactly the same thing with the airplane. I have a lot of compasses. Yeah, that, that's a sad, that's a sad head nod for me because he takes the bonus that I think is a compass bonus, whereas I don't really want a coin. I don't need the, um, the X, X card right there. And he draws into, I think, one of the better... Top tier ones, the draw card, tablet, uh, gem is, is a really good flip here. And just, I think, one of the best things that you can draw. Um, he also has the monster that wants to use his fear card. So the question is, like, whether he, his deck shuffled him a fear card uh, to kill this monster or not. In terms of how excited you are or, or not to see this guy as your guardian um, at this site. We're at the stage of the game where um, certainly killing the Guardians is is valuable. So JC should be angling towards doing that this turn. But, you know, with his upgrader and still leftover tablets, he, he definitely can get the arrowhead. That's no problem. It is just managing all of your resources throughout the course of the turn and when you're going to be able, not, not when. You, the only reason you'd want to kill this guy earlier is if he really, for some reason, wants to use the car on it this round rather than next round. But usually you save defeating the monsters, uh, the guardians, until the end of the end. Of the round. Um, I go into the tank for a minute here because, yeah, I do, I do really want to go up top. That was the plan with all these compasses. But instead, I could just do the sort of one compass airplane explore uh, and, and do something else. Um, the problem is that all of the idols that are available now are, like, not the most exciting for me. We've got a lot of Xs, which I don't need. I've already removed all the fear cards in my deck. We've got a couple coins. Coins are pretty bad at this stage in the game. I'm not going to be buying a whole lot of stuff, but it's better than nothing. Um, and we have an upgrader, but I have nothing to upgrade because I have no leftover resources. Uh, so that being said, obviously, I'm not going to use the X. I'll end up still going to the top here. I'm not looking. I, I, I have a good chunk of compasses because I already have those two assistants available to me. So I'm not looking at those artifacts and saying, well, I really need to leave a bunch of compasses available and I'll get some anyway. So I go and explore and I flip a pretty good one. The two tablets and a and a um, gem gives me some nice velocity moving into the top of the track here. I definitely wanted some of those tablets for my uh, tablet card in hand. Um, so I can now use any of those uh, action cards in hand if I want to. I was kind of hoping to flip the uh, fear thing so I could use my cleansing cauldron, the fear double tablet, double arrowhead, but you know, I, <laughs> I can't complain about flipping a pretty good um, site. I mean, all the site two ones are pretty good. I don't think there's anything here I would have been pr unhappy to see. Um, the tiger is a little bit awkward to kill with the two compasses. I think that is one of the hardest guardians or uh, not hardest i think it's one of the most expensive guardians to overcome that is definitely not one that i was hoping to flip in this instance uh compasses are just very very valuable we get an ostrich here that's going to send jc out to one of the better level uh one sites antoine right before him grabbing some necessary tablets to go along with his uh his bounty of other resources and at this stage, I say, okay, well, I've got the resources I need. Let's start moving up the track here and start putting pressure on the timing. See if I can get up to where I need to get up to first. Antoine says, I'll join the race. And now everybody's kind of grabbed their stuff. I've blinked first and we're, we're at it. I think JC is going to follow suit in just a moment here. Um, there's not anything that he is looking to do 
imminently otherwise, right? Like there's, we, we see the four artifacts that are in play here. None of these are super exciting in terms of like drawing specific resources. Crystal Earring can be exciting if you're like looking to get to a certain card in your deck <clears throat> and uh, want to like throw away a bunch of other chaff. War Club and Guardian's Crown are funny in that like we do have, you know, there have been a couple explorers this turn. Antoine's not going to use them, but maybe JC and I, I actually don't buy War Club very often, but when I have... Uh, something that costs two compasses and arrowhead instead paying four compasses to kill that tiger is actually pretty valid so it is something that i have my eye on as an option for this round looking at my resources here even with the uh tablet discount i think i'm gonna have to use one of those idols to uh advance the the next uh next tier um but it's something that I'm going to do because I, I do want to rush away up here. And JC says, yep, I'm, I'm down to contest. Um, and he will spend the, the coin and gem to do exactly that. He scooches his way up. I think I'm thinking about it for a minute here because it's like, do I really want to use my idol? It's costing, it costs victory points, but you know, Getting them into play, making use of them when it's important, and this feels like it's a case where it's important, is valuable. So I'm going to pick up the two tablets. Third tablet's going to let me use my uh, my card here. That's why this card is actually so important for me to have at this stage. It leaves me with an like a leftover tablet. Leftover tablet allows me to advance to the last space of the research track. And so um, this card coming really, really in handy. I would say this is certainly my luckier draw of the turn rather than the airplane. Although obviously having the airplane earlier um, lets me lets me do this explore in the first place, so uh, no complaints either way. Obviously, uh, you know the thin deck makes it so that it's very likely I'm going to draw into these things, but having it is really nice. We see here a pickaxe from Antoine to get the resources that he needs. He doesn't have the same kind of speed um, that JC and I do at this stage. JC will use his resources to advance. I think Antoine maybe didn't have any coins available. Maybe doesn't even have any coins in hand. Um, to allow him to, uh, uh, or actually, he doesn't need coins. I'm misreading a part of the board. Ignore me for a second. I thought I, I thought I moved him one space up. He doesn't have the gem though. JC does have the gem, so he manages to get the other first person, first mover advantage. He's got two idols available, so he absolutely can advance to the third tier here as soon as he wants to. And so I'm left with this question of, well, do I want to keep pressing up the track as well? I'd really like to be the first into the top slot here. It's probably going to be a low scoring game. Like we're low and slow to get our assistance. We're on turn four and no one has a gold assistant yet. So our our our, our game is, is not as strong as many games of Arnak are going to be, which means that the two extra points for being the first person to the top which you could convert, you could like even envision as four extra points, right? It's like 23 to 21. But if you swap it with the player who's beating you, it's a four point swing, right? So the two extra points for being the first person at the top of the track makes a really big deal here. Of the next moves, usually seeing people move to the left side, the coin tablet arrowhead is more common. But on the right side, we have the reward of getting a rebate of a tablet, which is pretty valuable. So that's something worth considering here. Um, that being said, I think I'm, I don't have the resources to get to the top as well as move into the next row. I think I need to have two steps. I think this is ostensibly true for JC as well, but he's got two idols sitting around. I haven't used my extra worker though. So sending them out to do something is, is like matters here. If I remember correctly, I'm considering going to this temple, the one in the middle row that gives you a fear. I don't really want a fear, but um, uh, because I, I don't want to clog my deck with uh, with stuff that isn't going to draw into my airplane. But that tablet and gem are a really big deal for advancing at this stage of the game. Looks like I'm going to be using four compasses here. Three compasses here and I'm deciding between which of these guys to use because I want to make sure that I can still uh, go out and we're all laughing at me <laughs> undoing my turn and just giving everyone free information about what I have available although there actually is no free information I've drawn my entire deck so there's no surprises here 
Um, I, maybe I'm trying to decide if I want to explore here. That's my guess, actually. And if I want to do that to get resources, yeah. I have these coin cards in my hand that I'm probably going to be using for the traveling components of where I'm going. So I, my travel guys are going to be actually just compass guys. Uh, because again, coin's not that valuable at this stage of the game. All the items that are in play are three coin items worth one victory point. It's not exactly the place you want to be on round four. So our item deck is uh, continues to be clogged. I think that I have to get resources in some fashion here. I can't get all the way to the top of the track uh, as is. I can't even advance and, and make my guys into gold. Um, I am at this stage where I'm thinking to myself, maybe I just don't even advance these guys into gold assistance. Uh, you know, they are still going to be giving me their one compass every turn. The question here is really, do I want the extra coin every turn from having advanced them to, to gold status? And yeah, of course, that it's, it's just good to have more stuff, but... There's not a lot that we're doing with coins per the conversation that we're already having. And this is the advantage of these kind of more middle-of-the-road assistants who are not as exciting to flip over. Um, but, you know, that hurdle of the the two tablets and the arrowhead is, is very real. Not as real as the <laughs> snake side where you have to, uh, where you have to sacrifice an uh, a entire idol or anything like that. But, yeah, still concerning. I might be officially taking the longest turn in the game here. I know it's because I see this race that JC and I are having. It's actually, now that we've got uh, some space, he's got a tablet and two idols. Tablet and two idols is actually maybe just enough to get up the track there. Um, what did I do instead? I used a coin. Ah, okay. I do indeed grab the tablet and gem along with the fear card. So my guess is that, oh, of course, I have Cleansing Cauldron in hand, so I have a way to um, kill that guy. Although it's a little bit awkward because drawing a card off my deck, I don't have any cards right now. So that is something that I need to consider is that I could use Cleansing Cauldron to draw something, but I have nothing to buy. So it's something that I want to be considering this turn. Um, burn out that, cleanse out that uh, fear card, draw into anything that I put into my deck right now. But I've already been talking about how the cards that are available in play are not the most exciting, but I do have spare coins, or at least two coins there. So definitely stuff going on. Antoine says, well, I'm losing the race, so I have, I'm, I'll have i break the bank. I'm going to go ahead and grab the assistant. And he decides he's going to buy the um, the discounting assistant. He knows he's going to buy at least something this turn, probably buy something next turn. Maybe he'll even gold this guy and get a double discount on something. He's not... I, I think that the amount that people underrate that assistant is a little bit surprising. JC here says, okay, I've got the carrier pigeon and he uses it to immediately upgrade um, uh, with the, the trader's coins. So those two tablets turn into actually an arrowhead and two coins, which is gonna allow him to advance on the track here. Um, I say, okay, now's the time, we're going for it. Um, I'll let him grab that one while I use the resources that I've already grabbed to move and get that rebated uh, tablet. And I do think there's a very real consideration I could have given here towards advancing on the left side and blocking him, but um, I don't super want the extra, the coin rebate here. Like I could have used my my idol to do that. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I do wonder if I'm supposed to have crossed to the left, blocked him. I wouldn't have gotten the tablet rebate, uh, but I, I think I have extra tablets on hand and extra tablet on hand. So... It might have been worth the minus one to JC for making it that I have like worse resources. Um, I would have had to commit to using the idol. And I think I was hoping that JC wouldn't necessarily advance to the next row. So I wouldn't have to fill my fourth idol slot. Filling all four idol slots is not a great feeling, right? That's a, that's a big chunk of points that I gave up there. I paid four points for the privilege of being the person who gets plus two points for getting to the top of the track. But again, remember, it's that delta in points. If JC is my primary opponent, which I'm not sure that he is, but if he is, it's a four-point swing. So I paid four points for a four-point swing against him. And I look into these three, and I don't have an obvious winner, which I think means that there's at least a card draw in there because <laughs> I can't take the card draw. And uh, I can't take anything that 
um, is like an X or I could, I guess I could take an X, but I like wanted to use cleansing cauldron for it ideally. Um, so I'm hoping to look for like a resource of some sort, a compass ideally, I think, or maybe a tablet. Um, I could even take something that upgrades one of those tablets into an arrowhead. I think that would be pretty respectable at this stage as well. Um, but yeah, stuff that I think is not, not the most obvious for me. So again, I have to Think about how I'm rearranging my turn from here. And now JC is not pressed by Antoine, so he can decide if he wants to advance to the top row there and get his mystery reward or wait until later. Antoine, seeing that he lost, said, okay, I'll just start golding up my assistance, which is exactly what he did. He was the person that had more tablets and arrowheads, so it makes a lot of sense um, that he's crossing that threshold there. And he's up to a gazillion compasses at this stage, thanks to his upgraded explorer. We know he's going to buy an artifact because he's got the the guy that he's got compasses. He's got the guy that discounts uh, one of those purchases. So it's just a question of which one he's going to buy. He doesn't need to do the monster one. So he might do the card draw one, cycle through his deck, make it so that he draws into the horse, make it so that he's more likely to get into his pickaxe next turn. Um, Crystal Earring would be viable for him. Monkey Medallion is okay too. But again, the, the items that are in play are not the most exciting items. Take a quick moment. Okay. So yeah, the the artifact row is interesting clogged up with mediocre artifacts right now. Um, you know, we see Antoine with a stack. We see, I look like I only have one, but I have three plus whatever cards in my hand thanks to my assistance. JC is sitting on three compasses. So um, we've all you know, basically done our explorers for a turn. Our archaeologists are out there. And uh, in some games, this would be the situation where suddenly, like, you start getting a rush of, like, what there is. And so here we see that uh, Antoine is going to gonna break the bank here, um, draw through those cards like we mentioned. My cat's staring at me. You can come up. Nope. Um <laughs> draw those cards like we mentioned so that you can get like the horse the pickaxe right are those options in for the next turn so gonna give him some flexibility in terms of what his fifth turn is gonna look like and maybe a little bit of a boost on this turn it's also two points it's it's a fine buy for him it's not not the most exciting but it will then flip something that might make it that jc and i are like oh okay and then suddenly we start, might see churning through at this stage this next flip is a kind of interesting one. I do think that usually Cursed Idol is a, a great pickup, but I've already <laughs> I've already done everything I want to do with gems this turn. If I had been able to like buy this at light speed in the middle of the turn, I would have happily taken the gem and the uh, curse for the two compasses. Uh, but at this stage, I'm already at the top, so it's not quite as exciting. And JC is in a little bit of a similar situation, although he actually can get to the top top with this one. So he says, it's not that important to me. I'll take my time. Let's see what I get off of the um, fishing pole here. And uh, am I in the way? <laughs> Maybe they're in the way? Nope, can't see it. So I don't remember exactly what this is offhand, but he's not snap taking it, which means that he's, look, he's considering one of the options in the row instead. Um, it's a it's a fine pickup yeah okay so okay so his airdrop so he decides instead that he's going to grab the uh turtle over airdrop airdrop in a vacuum is significantly better than the turtle um however at the end of the game he's basically at the whim of like whatever card there is because he's not going to draw that card until next turn maybe and he's at the whim of whatever card like random card it is in that last slot of the row there so the turtle which just guarantees another card draw and some some movement is is probably the better option for him in this case. Not the most exciting. I was just talking about needing to draw a card, and uh, I have some coins, or maybe I don't have coins anymore. Nope. Here I go with my four compasses. I would uh, I think rather buy something else, but I am just in a situation where I need to take an action. Um, so is four compasses going to buy me a war club? No, I don't think so. I must have used my coins, probably advancing up the track, and don't have other ways of using of getting coins right now. I know that I want a card on the top of my deck, 
So I'm probably actually looking at monkey medallion and I can monkey medallion into one of these items. They're not the most exciting items, but they are items and put that on my deck so I can use my cleansing cauldron. Monkey medallion is like fine. I mean, it's two points plus the points of the item I get. So um, I'm at the stage where since I'm not going to be advancing my book all that much, I might just be like pivoting into getting as many points as possible. And uh, monkey medallion is usually not something I buy until maybe later in the game. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I need a card on my deck to maximize the value of Cleansing Cauldron here. And I flip what I think is one of the absolute best cards in the game. The Stone Key uh, is just so many points. I would have way rather taken the Stone Key than the Monkey Medallion in that last instance. Antoine, I guess, really needs the gem because he basically snap buys that. I, in his position, I think would have bought the Stone Key instead. But looking at the board and looking at his resources, actually, the gem is going to get him... Um, the gem is going to get him another gold assistant. So actually, it's going to make it so that he more or less bought this card for free uh, because the assistant gives him a two discount. So actually, I can I can see and I can respect um, that choice. But he's definitely clogging up his deck with a, a decent number of fear at this point in time. He's, he's done very little fear removal and uh, has picked up some incidentally along the way, which is okay as long as he has things to do with it. But um, it probably is going to lead to some some awkwardness somewhere, maybe even with his current hand right now. JC's got three compasses. For me, I think that if I'm in his position, I almost certainly just go ahead and buy the uh, stone key. It's it's essentially two wild resources, right? Anything that your your idol is, if you just want to like use the idol, um, or it's just victory points. Plus, you can use it again for a tablet next turn. It's just an extremely powerful, good value card. The other option that he's looking at, though, is buying Flask. Flask is a very, very sexy top deck flip. Um, and he could spend the two coins, pick up Flask, throw it in the bottom of his deck, and make it so that he's drawing most of his deck next turn. Now, I think that actually the, the size of his deck, one, two, three, four, five, six, he's going to have to draw a couple cards next turn to draw into that Flask. But it is, it's a really good card uh, for this stage of the game. So it makes sense that he decides that he wants to do that. We flip Hot Air Balloon, which is pretty amazing. But uh, frankly, is, is not exactly what I'm hoping to see. I want to see something that's a little bit more high impact that I can use my um, airdrop that I just drew off the deck for. So here's the Cleansing Cauldron action. And uh, it's a question then here whether um, Antoine or JC is going to essentially buy the, uh, the hot air balloon with two coins. Um, because the three compasses and the free explorer is very very powerful as well so suddenly we're getting some really good one use powers at the end of the game which is definitely making a big difference for these opponents uh, i'm gonna do a quick pause on this and skip forward to when antoine comes back jc and i spend that time chopping it up kind of discussing the board state and how things are going and uh, we reviewed what we did on our turns as antoine takes his seat again there he goes advancing, getting the increase there. Now he's got his discount to purchase something. And the stone key is wheeled all the way around. So JC is back in the position of being able to choose whether he wants it or not. I think he's out of cards in his hand uh, from the way that he's sitting and the number of cards that he has in play. So what, what you see is what you get with him. He's also got to decide if he wants to use his idols and grab one of those um, assistants or not. He could just play a fully, I guess, one assistant game. Uh, <laughs> similar logic of me saying I'm not going to get gold assistance. Like, does he even bother getting another assistant at this stage? Is it worth it for what he has to give up? I mean, using an idol to get a gem, using that one coin that he has left over, uh, is is probably good, right? I mean, he basically pays the the idol but um gets back the uh two coins of amelia Earhart. probably not taking the exiling one because it doesn't look like he has any fear cards right now is that what he's using his coin for yeah okay so yeah he's gonna go ahead and do the amelia Earhart thing And finally, on round four, gets a second assistant. Man, this is an awkward game. <laughs> I, 
I think, uh, you know, a part of it is that we had an awkward assistant row, a little bit of an awkward item row. We've had a, kind of an awkward artifacts row, like nothing crazy exciting going on throughout most of this game. And I'm making plays here that are suboptimal, right? Like I'm choosing to take Swiss Army Knife, which I think is a really bad card. I would have much rather had Chronometer for what it's worth. Um, it's a really pretty bad card. It's one point. It's like going to do okay things. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it. Also would have been pretty happy with the machete. They see me pointing there. Um, so, you know, a, a little bit of a bummer, but, uh, I mean, that, that is how it goes, right? There's no reason that my opponent should facilitate that. I was surprised to see that Antoine did not use the, um, discounter guy to buy the stone idol, but at the same time, drawing into balloon next turn is very, very good. So actually maybe I'm just taking that back fully. I do think that's a really good get for him. The, the value that it generates is, is quite high. Maybe I'm just like overvaluing stone, stone key idol. I just think that card is like nuts. JC again left with his option, but he's debating it. Might be that he just is not confident that this is what he like wants to be doing with his resources. Um, you know, Stone Key doesn't have a ton of power immediately. It gives you the power of like using another idol that you maybe have locked up. Uh, but he's got a lot of I- idols avail- or he has one idol left available to him, right? It's it's it is purely a victory point proposition at this stage, which is, I think, fine on turn four. Um, more than fine, clearly, since I keep talking about it. <laughs> and he will go for it. Flipping in a coconut flask, which is another really good three cost. So suddenly we're seeing now the really more powerful artifacts. Um, it's three costs, two points, gives you two coins, gives you, well, one of those guys that is in play right now. Here I go grabbing some stuff with a Swiss Army Knife. I still have a monster to kill this turn. So does JC. And is Antoine passing for the turn? I think that might be the end of it for him. I don't think he has much left else in hand. I mean, he could, like, use the idol to get the three compasses, but I don't think that he needs to do that at this stage. Yeah, no rush here. He's not racing anything, right? This was the turn where we raced, and now we're no longer racing each other. We're all kind of kind of diverged into our different slots. JC's got two idols available now. He's going to use the first one to grab a mix of things. It's not my favorite get to take the, the the mix of things but he needs it because uh he actually needs the coin which is super duper awkward and he's using amelia as a boot so a little bit of a downgrade to, to kill this monster um on his part which is which is definitely a sign of you know having to like he's responded to throughout the course of the turn for what he's had what he's had available to him i think that's why he was debating so much about whether he wanted to do the stone key it's like he bought the stone key and then used uh the, the stone key as as an idol for a coin and a compass which is like generally i think one of the worst uses of it you usually want to be using it for those tablets or arrowhead or gem um, rather than the situation that you're you're in right there but killing the monster is just worth five points so it is absolutely worth um the, the using the two idols you know he basically paid five points to gain five points and not gain a um not gain a fear gain this extra move for next turn. So uh, it's definitely an upgrade. I don't think that there's any reason it wouldn't be. Uh, we can skip this. The table does admittedly look cool. If anybody has an extra $6,500 they want to spend me, wouldn't mind. Um, great, what do we draw into here? I see our Swiss army knife. Airplane again, <laughs> and our spear again. So we're very, very lucky with our draws this game. Um, those are definitely the two most powerful cards in our deck, and uh, we've drawn into them. Swiss Army Knife actually is, is probably also one of the better cards. It's not good, but it's better than most of the rest of our deck because we just have a very thin deck. It's turn five, so JC is first. He is going to use the sea turtle along with amelia to travel up north that's going to draw him two cards which i think draws him into his flask if i remember correctly flask is going to help him draw into the rest of his deck later which is pretty exciting so um a nice opener for him 
Uh, and, and that's part of the reason why that, that site, the draw card tablet, uh, uh, gem, I think is just like one of the absolute best sites. Maybe it's just the best site in the game period. Um, also gives him a gem that he needs to advance to the top row here. He's not really racing with Antoine, but knowing what the free extra resource is, um, rather than like some mystery bonus later can be good depending on how precisely this turn is going to play out for him. It's less important if you have access to a lot of compasses because compasses will mean you buy artifacts. Artifacts are going to cycle through in the last turn as people are buying things. And so you kind of have to be a little bit tactical on your feet anyway. But if you're low on compasses and you're not planning on buying many artifacts, then um, counting your resources out from early in the turn becomes even more important. Usually this is kind of a curious game too because in on Bird Temple... Everybody is exploring on the last turn so that they can um, get the book up to the last tier of the research track um, and uh, and get that free kill. But I'm not getting up there. I don't think JC is getting up there. It is definitely possible for Antoine to get up there with his book. In fact, he really wants to because he's got all the rewards for getting his book up there that, that are going to happen at this stage. But it's really unlikely that two of us are going to. That being said, with an airplane, of course, I'm exploring anyway. I'm just going to have to kill this guy the old school way. Um, and it looks like I do have a arrowhead with me. So uh, I think that's because I took the upgrade spot and upgraded a uh, tablet that I had on hand. So this is going to be a full six. A full six from Antoine to get up top there. He will have a fear card that he burns from his hand, which I normally don't like doing, but at this stage of the game um, is certainly worth the victory point. I prefer to have the the fear card in my in my discard pile if I can find a way to use it beforehand um, is is ultimately a goal for me. I think that Antoine might not need to rush, having explored the six site here. I can't quite see JC's um, exploration stack, but I think he probably had the time. That being said, if there's nothing else that he's looking to race to do. Getting the information available early, what does he need to beat this monster and everything like that is valuable. So um, I like it as a first play, uh, but it's not I think it's not necessary in this point. Like it can be in other games where it's like, if I don't explore it now, someone else is going to explore that top row there. Um, JC does indeed use the flask that we mentioned. Looks like JC does have just one compass here. So yeah, Antoine had time. And so what he's saying, what he's communicated here is that there's nothing that he needs to rush for. There's nothing that he needs in play that he thinks is very important. So seeing the options there is great. The monkey is a pretty great one to flip later in the game if you have access to coins. Um, it might be unkillable, right? Like for JC, actually, like he doesn't have any coins. He might not have good access to coins. So actually it might be really bad flip for him. But usually it's a great way to convert coins into victory points late game. So I love seeing the monkey king wukong at the end of the game um there's a couple ways to deal with it there's the warhammer out there there is the coconut flask which will give two of those four coins so there's definitely ways to get there i've got my resources for killing here i have no flexibility with idols anymore i'm low on compasses because i've already done and explore this turn and I think if I remember from my hand, I don't have that many. So it's it's not like I, I'm, I think I'm at the stage of buying like one artifact this round. And uh, I do think that I maybe make a little bit of a misplay here. I think what I'm supposed to have done is bought the coconut flask, the two coins from that, and then discard a card from hand so that I can use the, um, the tablet guy. I need extra tablets, uh, or sorry, not tablets, arrowhead, the arrowhead assistant. Um, I need an arrowhead to deal with this... Uh, Starship Troopers monster that I'm fighting here, um, beetle thing. And uh, I need the coins. You see, I've set aside the two coins that I actually have. Um, so actually, maybe I don't go for Coconut Flask because I don't need the extra two coins. But the yeah, the, the, the two victory points and getting the extra arrowhead are valuable for me. Um, in terms of like, I can use the arrowhead either at the top of the track or an arrowhead and two compasses to just move the book and get like a little bit of smidge perks there. It's not the most exciting. I have, I believe, right, I have that like spearhead uh, in hand. So an extra, an extra arrowhead here along with a tablet that I haven't played does allow me to advance that book for essentially two resources plus this card in hand, um, which will give me 
uh, a compass and a gold back. And the reason I'm sitting here counting for so long, you see me literally counting on my fingers, is trying to figure out how many compasses I need to engage with the various parts of the game. Now I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about using my spearhead thing. And I actually do wonder in retrospect, I can't see my hand perfectly here and I'm not sure that I am like could count it all out. Um, but I maybe should have just considered uh, uh, not advancing at all and just going for the top of the track, just acknowledging that getting one of those gold assistants is not important. I think I needed the extra compass, which is why I care about it. The reason that I kill this monster first is because I figure I have, I need a travel icon to feed the um, that uh, that fellow right there. And so I figure, oh, I'll buy that and use the travel icon, I think is what I was thinking at the time. Get a really fast turn from Antoine. I actually didn't even catch what he did. And uh, we see JC here go out and explore. And he he hits the crash site. Usually a pretty unexciting flip at this stage of the game. Two compasses back is actually not too terrible at the end. Um, sometimes this allows you to buy into an artifact, which solves your problems anyway. So I actually think that there are worse flips at this stage, um, depending on your circumstances. It still is one of the worst flips, but I think it's much worse in the mid game than it is at the end here. Of course, he doesn't take the one victory point machete off the board, just the two compasses back, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so it really is the question of whether you can turn those into an artifact that converts into something else. And oftentimes the answer is yes. So uh, it's it's a bit of a bummer flip, but it's not as bummer as it could be. The three tablets is maybe a bit of a pain, but he has one tablet on hand and could just use the idol. So this monster is imminently defeatable by him. Um, it would cost four points to do that, but he gains five for for killing uh, so, you know, there's there's definitely something there. I realize what uh, what uh, resources I want and need. So I use the uh, the guy that I just defeated. Um, I see that I still have. Oh, I think I think that's what I'm doing. I'm like managing like what I want to do. That's the site I wanted to go to, which is why I killed that guy, because he didn't want to use a different card. And unfortunately, Coconut Flask gets bought up, I think, right before I want to use it i thought that maybe with the way things were sequencing it would still be available um and that's not the case so i kind of need a, i end up needing to to refocus my efforts here um flipping war mask though does mean that there's another option to get an arrowhead in play it doesn't get the two coins it's not worth two points so this i think i don't need the coins but i think the the cost of a point is definitely notable here if i were to buy war mask uh rather than the um <laughs> the uh the coconut flask there mm. actually i also wonder if uh you know we've got another site tier tier two site available um i've used all my workers at this stage which is why i set down the uh the tiger there i think i was more concerned that someone would take the action that i needed at the top god i look so shiny in this white background um i think i was more concerned that someone would take that action that i needed at the top those resources that i needed the two tablets and the uh and the gem which would be useful i think primarily for dealing with uh getting the the temple bonuses the two six elevens at the top um i think that's primarily the goal there uh, rather than necessarily getting access to the arrowhead. Missed what JC did because of the the ring action there. Let's see if we can figure it out. Ah, he paid a tablet for the stone idol, or the, the, the stone key, which is either three victory points or the flexibility of having an idol there. So he just gets to choose at this stage, and it's the reason why I love stone key. So if I had planned on using this tiger uh, for the travel icon for this guy, then that's definitely an oversight on my part to have not bought it. Although it looks like, oh, I see. I don't have access to three fast exploration tokens looking at my hand now. I need to use the Swiss Army knife for one of those tokens. I think I'm looking at using these tablets now rather than using an arrowhead to advance on the track here with uh, with this with this blade yep we got three tablets there that's gonna scooch me up 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was hoping I was hoping for that coconut flask to last forever, basically. <laughs> um, that no one will want it for one reason or another. Because I just need access to this extra exploration token. I'm gonna mentally note though, like what if I just didn't do that? If I just didn't advance there, that's gonna cost that would have cost me a point on the track. I won't have a coin and a gem, but I will have three tablets, or more accurately, two tablets for doing a top row. So we're gonna put that in the back of our brains because I'd wondered after the game if this was a mistake of mine. We're gonna we're gonna come back to it. Looks like Antoine advances on the track, draws himself a card. You more often see people going up the left side there. It's just somehow it's just such a pain to get two tablets in an arrowhead. So specific. <clears throat> Some fast bird tablets here. One of them becomes an arrowhead immediately. And JC will advance um, and golden up a much better assistant to golden up. It's kind of a bummer for him that this, uh, you know, the, like the slow roll on the assistants is fine. But this is definitely an assistant that's quite good on the golden side. So he is missing out, has missed out a little bit more than I have um, with the late golden here. Of course, Antoine said, you know what, I'm going to lose the race. So he on turn four said, I'll go for the goldens. I'll, I'll generate that extra value there and we'll see how it goes. And Antoine has a lot of flexibility left in his idols. He's got five explorers. He's only used two of his idols. Um, so that's that's pretty nice for him and that he's got some flexibility there. He's drawn his horse this turn. Um, we haven't seen a pickaxe yet, but uh, he might have drawn into it. Stuff to say. Oh, the hot air balloon is there. He will notice soon. That he's not supposed to have the hot air balloon in his discard pile. We're back to me, so I'm looking at. Uh, I don't have to kill a monster anymore, so the the war club is out. Um, I don't need the Pathfinder staff. It's not a good sort of like exchange of of energy or resources. I could like crystal earring for two points. It's not exciting. The ornate hammer is not a bad choice, but I don't think I have access to four exploration tokens. I think that the plan is to use three exploration tokens. I guess maybe four if I use the compass, or not the compass, the Swiss army knife. I think I have a compass in hand and those two guys in play. So that is something uh, uh, to note. I'm slow rolling the Swiss army knife, I think, because I'm, I haven't decided on what I want to do yet, what I want to take, right? Do I need this or do I need that? Um, I know that I'm not going to use it to get rid of anything. I don't have any fear cards. So it's almost certainly like a tablet and a, and a, um, and a compass, right? Those are like the best things that I could get. But like, maybe I can't use the tablet, right? One tablet really doesn't do too much for me. Um, unless I'm like planning out oh, there, he goes, he knows it. Unless I'm planning on like advancing the book again, but advancing the book is not that many points at this stage. I'm not going to get the book up the track. I think two more times if i'm correct i mean i guess it's possible what do i i'm gonna make a coin i think i have a coin in hand i guess i could actually get up two steps on the uh on the track with the book get those three compasses um, but it's only a couple points it's a couple points and the compasses so the question is, is that better than just dealing with the, the temple tiles up top? And it's close. Honestly, it's very, very close. And in most games where your book is a little bit more advanced, you definitely want those rewards, those final rewards on the um, bird side of the track the, for the book. The three compasses, the free artifact, the killing a monster are absurd. They're very, very good one-time bonuses. Looks like I took a compass and... Nothing. Maybe I did have a fear. I don't think so. Maybe I took a coin. It's just blending in with my yellow board. Antoine grabbed a fear. Ah, okay. So he went to the the the, the fear tablet gem site. You see how all the players have uh, definitely kept their eye on that spot. It's especially good at the end of the game because you know you. Th those resources, um, the, the action that it gives you, I mean, you have to count it out, but the actions that they give you tend to be worth the minus one victory point. And sometimes you find a way to get, get rid of those minus one victory points anyway, uh, which is pretty sweet. 
we see the old hat coming out here and a Pathfinder staff, which is going to allow JC to be a little bit more flexible on what resources he wants. He also could use a Pathfinder staff to run away from the um, Guardian there, but by choosing not to, of course, he's saying, I am planning on defeating this. Um, he probably wants to grab some tablets here, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him move down to the double tablet spot. He doesn't need it though. What he says is I need a compass. So he's probably counting on a compass for exactly, you know, one extra compass for some, some purpose and an arrowhead. Arrowhead's interesting. Um, and this flip is really interesting for me. I think that this, uh, this horn is a little bit under -costed. at three. It would probably not be very good, but at two, it's just one of the cheapest artifacts in the deck gives you a point. Um, and I have access to, at the time, what I think is probably some extra compasses. So I can spend these two and swap this guy. I needed to get myself an arrowhead was what I had been thinking. So I'll go ahead and do that by grabbing this assistant out here um, and getting rid of my old sailor friend, which is much better than buying the war mask. Ceremonial rattle here is pretty nice for Antoine primarily as he basically... If he can pay the three compasses, untap uh, his guy that gives two compasses, and largely he like paid one compass for two victory points. I think Ceremonial Rattle is a lot of times one of the, uh, I think an overlooked card. It's not great, it's just a role player, but um, I think it's just a really nice ratio at this stage. JC is going to go ahead and move up the track, getting himself uh, that, uh, that, that golden Amelia Earhart. Two coins, not too exciting. And uh, unless we see an ocarina, it's not like he's going to be traveling again anytime soon. So I still could have... Yeah, the problem is like whether I would have been able to delay until that guardian's horn. So the whole like, should I have not spent the tablets thing is like really really hard to tell um the answer is absolutely yes right if if i had been able to be slow which i don't think i could have then the tablets are, are really really great for me right like i can use those two tablets and the coins that i have left over it'd be worth plus five points going from six to eleven there rather than the plus one that i got from advancing but um, maybe I need the extra. I guess I'm, I might be out of compasses at this stage. If I end the game with a compass, then strictly, yes. <laughs> but uh, again, I might not have been able to delay. So there's certainly some awkwardness there um, in terms of like how I sequence things. I do think that I might have left a couple points on the table, but I'm realizing that it's actually it's actually unknowable. It's like un unclaimable because who knows that we would have flipped that decorated horn out. I think that if I remember correctly, when I was counting it out, it was like I needed the extra compass so that I could get the war mass or the coconut flask or something like that and have like a compass left over or maybe not have a compass left over or something like that. Um, but certainly the timing of this round, both at the beginning where I like wanted to go faster and then later on here where I would have rather been able to delay a little bit more have worked a bit clumsily for me. Um, that is the downside of having used all of your idols, being at the top of the track at not having a lot of resources. Like I don't have the flexibility to say like, oh, I kind of want to take this like dilly dally action. Um, whereas my opponents are able to play at a much more controlled pace, allowing them to do things at the time when they want to do them. Um, particularly Antoine, who's, who's the richest and has the most spaces to go um, on the track and everything like that. I kind of missed what Antoine did on his turn, but he has a bunch of compasses now, so maybe he played a horse or something like that. Or I think he played it earlier in his turn. I don't know. <clears throat> JC finally advances to the top here. He's got the resources. I think he took the card draw. Yep. A nice, a nice little gift. Often you see the card draws go away first, but if you remember from last turn, I wasn't able to grab it because I had no cards in my deck. I think we're about to enter my favorite moment of this game. 
where I pass with two cards in hand, two coins. One of them, so one of them is a compass. One of them is a a coin. So I pass with three coins and a compass. A little bit awkward. And my favorite moment is when I'm gonna deadpan the camera in a second. Nope, I do not think I win this game. Um, yeah, I, it feels like it's a low scoring game for me. I've got four monsters killed. I've got a kind of thinner deck. I like to have a little bit of a thicker deck. My book is not very well advanced at all. Um, and I've got six points in the temple. All of my points for idols are are sopped up by the, the five idols that I created. It feels like a low scoring game and it is a low scoring game for me, but I am at this stage now. I, what I was saying to people, and this is, I stand by this is usually when you pass your game and your opponents play for another 15 minutes, you're uh, not going to win that game. We'll see how that pans out here. Antoine bought the war mask. He, I think, really needed the uh, the uh, 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 arrowhead there. But War Mask is not an exciting get um, at this stage. We're going to have to see, like, what is he doing with that arrowhead? Maybe it, he must be advancing up on the right side there. Yeah, I'm curious. The, the War Mask over, over, like, the Ceremonial Rattle or something like that, but it is actually resources that, that do the thing that he needs, right? So that, that makes a big difference. And that's indeed what happens is he he uses um, he uses it to advance on the track there, and then he uses the Idol of Anu Anna um, to advance the final space at the top, knowing that he doesn't have good access to a gem, doesn't have coins um, available to turn those idols into... Uh, into gems so grabs that that idol which i think is uh winds up being a smidge painful for jc but both antoine and jc here are actually trying to figure out they need to make sure that they beat the monsters that they have i'm having a hard time seeing what resources jc has available to him um but both players are definitely in a position where they're yeah they're they're short on what they need and uh, there is a war club out there. So JC's got the four for the war club. So he can just kind of do it that way. Um, but Antoine can't afford the war club. He does, however, need four coins. And what do we flip here? We flip a serpent's gold, which is four coins on it. It's worth one point, right? Two minus one for the fear. And he could then just like kill the monkey. So that's a really, really good flip for him. Actually, a little bit surprised that he didn't um, grab war club the preceding round with his with his free with his free book artifact to to kill the monkey um but the serpent's gold comes in here to save the day i, I think he's still got yeah he's still got cards in his hand so it's tough to say how many uh how many compasses he has i think it's a reasonable estimate that that card is a fear card um given that he's drawn a lot of his deck uh it's Pretty clearly, I think, not a pickaxe. And it looks like at this stage, Antoine's trying to figure out roughly how many points other people have as he's asking how many cards I have in my deck even <laughs> fast for the round. So trying to get a sense of like what he needs to do, how lucky does he need to be uh, in in order to, to make a plan for the turn here. But he doesn't have a lot of flexible options left. Like He, he has access to his idols. He has his card in hand. And he probably needs to do something, right? He's he's not just going to pass here. So if he does use, let's say his hand is nothing, um, and he does use the idol for a coin and a compass, the three compasses buys the serpent's gold. That um, costs him four points to use the idol, but it's plus one point for the serpent's gold, plus five points for the monkey is six points. So it's kind of, I think, a, a no-brainer that that's going to be the case for him um, if, 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 uh, if he needs needs to make that happen so we were talking earlier about whether he should spend the three compasses for the war mask um but the war mask so the war mask and the idol allowed him to advance and get a free artifact um now the artifact that he ended up choosing was was not in play at the time so there's certainly something to be said for churning the market but let's so let's pretend that wasn't the case if he doesn't spend the idol if he doesn't buy the war mask and instead he just buys like the club, he gives up the the two points for having advanced, I think, on the track, the one point for the war mask itself. So he swaps three, but we have the idol slot. So it's a three for three swap. So it's a null swap for him. 
Um, he has defeated the monkey in this scenario, which I think he's about to anyway, with the war club, gaining a point there. So, yeah, just to like to hash back on this line of play that he went through, he gave himself the opportunity to get lucky, right? He drew the idol of Anu Anu, which is like pretty pretty good, actually. I mean, it scored him, I think, uh, is that three points to move into that into that final spot right there. So he gave himself the opportunity. He basically paid zero points for the opportunity to see another card off the deck. So I think that's the right line. I'd have to like deconstruct it a little bit more. That seems about right. JC here says, all right, sounds good. I'm going to kill this guy with the, the club. Uh, Runes of the Dead also would have killed that guy for him just fine. And uh, actually, you know, if Antoine had found another way to get resources, he might have actually just been able to slide up the track itself and make that solve his problem for him. But uh, he doesn't. He flips, uh, JC plays a a fishing pole and flips a three-point brush off the top of the deck which uh, brush, car, automobile are all really, really good flips. They're about, I think, 20. Yeah, there's me being like, I was saying that was a pretty absurd flip. And he's like, well, there were three. And I'm like, yeah, there's like 20 cards left in the deck. (laughs) So it was a nice flip, but not, I mean, there were three options. And also a couple options in there that are like two pointers, right? Like your parrots, I guess the grappling hook is gone. I think we've actually bought a fair number of the two pointers too. Yeah, grappling hook's gone from the beginning of the game, fishing pole. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the, the better flips, no question. Um, and it looks like we all end the game there. Really interesting. I don't usually see all players use all of their idols, but we just kind of were all a little bit choked. Um, nobody gets to the top tier with their book on the bird track, which is, like, unheard of. So definitely anticipating a, uh, a weaker scoring game here. And, you know... I, you can't hear it in the audio here, but after I looked at the camera and said, Mm-mm, and they were like going through those final rounds at one point, I like, I like asked them, I was like, does everybody think they're losing this game? And uh, turns out that the person that was wrong was me. I do end up winning this game. Oh, it looks like we are going to see the scores here. That's exciting. That's fun. Um, we have pretty similar scores as you saw there, 28, 27, 25 for advancing on the track. Um, mine is the weakest, even though I have the 23 for being the first to the top because my book is like basically nowhere. Um, whereas the other players' books did advance at least more than halfway up the track there, which makes a nice big difference for them. I, of course, also have the advantage of the six points for the temple tile and the uh, five extra points for monsters as my opponents each defeated three and I defeated four, which is a reflection of the number of times I took my airplane to go flying um points for cards here i remember having nine that was very important uh that i remembered that um which was fewer than my opponents i want to say jc's was like in the high teens or something like that but um if we've kind of counted all these points together right we have that top row the 28 27 25 so we're within a couple points of each other i have plus 11 points in terms of like temple tile monsters so that's that's a big difference right there jc's got about like like i said in the high teens if i've got nine he's got about 10 more points than i do in items i think uh both of us had no fear i think antoine had four fear or something or three fear or something like that um but we've all used our idols i have uh jace uh, antoine and i have one extra idol over jc so that's an additional three points right there And that's going to be the difference. We end up doing some extra counting throughout the course of this, but I do take it away with 75 to, I believe, 73 or 72 for JC to, I believe, 68 or 69 for Antoine. So we're all within about three points of each other. A pretty piddly score. I actually had to go back in Board Game Arena. I thought that this was going to be like a score that was like unheard of. I actually went back about 27 games and then I did find that I'd won a three player game with 75 points. So not an unheard of experience, but definitely a much clunkier game than I'm used to playing. Um, If you like this video, I am planning on making a strategy guide for Arnak in the near future, given uh, my success in playing this game this year. I've had some pretty good, uh, pretty good streaks, which I'm I'm really happy with, obviously. Um, Taking down the ring here is pretty great. Antoine is an incredible opponent who 
like picked up Twilight Struggle and then like placed second in the Twilight Struggle tournament like out of nowhere. JC broke a record by being at four final tables this week and winning two of them. So obviously pretty insane opponents um, and I'm not a slouch myself. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, Throw me the like and subscribe thing if you like. Uh, And if not, that's fine too. Have a wonderful day, everybody.